more than two-thirds of the Earth's surface is made up of oceans. They play a key role for the global climate as they store heat and constantly exchange vast amounts of CO2 with the atmosphere. All told, oceans absorb about one-third of human-made carbon dioxide. Most of the chemical and biological degradation and exchange processes take place in the upper 1,000 meters of the ocean. Close to the surface, the water is flooded with light and well mixed. But from about 200 meters downwards, very little sunlight penetrates the water, which is why it is often called the twilight zone. Not just a home to strange animals like siphonophore jellyfish, this layer plays a key role in the ocean's biological pump, which contributes to the oceanic carbon cycle. The physical, chemical, and biological exchange processes between the ocean and the atmosphere also help scientists better reconstruct past climates and thus provide a means to better understand climate change. In order to investigate these complex processes between the ocean and the atmosphere in great detail, one must go out to sea. Until now, scientists have used research vessels such as the Poseidon or the Polish Dam. But recently, a sailing yacht has become available for marine research, the Eugen Zeibold. The 22-meter research yacht can accommodate five scientists and three crew members. The idea of the ship was to have a flexible platform to study biogeochemical cycles in the ocean plus the atmosphere. And therefore we need a ship all the time, year-round, which we can use for seasonal studies, for El Nino La Nina studies, and with a big ship where you have to wait for three years, that's not possible. For a long time, climate geologist Gerald Haug was looking for an opportunity to study upper ocean biogeochemistry and the interaction with the atmosphere. This involves the direct coupling of the physics and chemistry of the ocean, particularly its nutrient cycles and biology. Deep knowledge is important in understanding, for instance, the CO2 exchange processes between ocean and atmosphere, how the ocean transfers heat, and how it interacts with the atmosphere. Ideally, such measurements should be taken without contaminating samples with metal traces of the hull or exhaust fumes. Of course, it's possible with big ships, but a big ship that costs thirty, forty thousand dollars a day, or a polar that costs eighty thousand dollars a day, you won't have to ship all the time for our scientific community. And many things we can do just as well with a small boat, for example, the the, the contamination-free probing with a sailboat is a huge advantage over the big ships where you always have diesel contamination. And we have to ship just for us as a community year-round to do this all the time. From a distance, the Eugen Seilboat looks like any conventional large sailing yacht. On closer inspection, though, one notices a long carbon tube, the angular deckhouse, and the pivoting A-frame on the aft deck of the ship. It serves as a crane for some of the various water samplers. So the scientific equipment uh, of this boat is twofold. We have gear which is going into the water to sample plankton and water down to great depth. And then we have water provided through the keel, uh, through a Teflon uh, tube. It's very clean water into the wet lab and then distributed to the different labs on the ship. So the devices which are going into the water are driven over the A-frame with a very nice small winch we have on the ship um, to sample vertical uh, uh, plankton samples. We have a multi-net which is made from titanium. Then we have a bongo net to sample horizontal plankton uh, with a typical normal bongo net. We have a rosette water sampler equipped with five Niskin bottles and a, a CTD probe. We have a large volume pump uh, to pump uh, four liters of water per minute at different uh, depths uh, in the upper water column. To study the biogeochemical processes in the sea and the interaction of the ocean surface with the atmosphere, scientists aboard the Eugen Seibold analyze the air above the ocean and continuously take water samples from different depths with various devices. This is our uh, high volume pump. Uh, it, it pumps a high volume of water across this filter holder, which we mount with one or multiple filters to collect particulates from the water column. Uh, we deploy this uh, instrument to a, a certain depth and um, 
there we let it pump, for instance, 100 liters of water across these filters. Then we collect it again on deck, we remove the filters, send them back to mines for further analysis. This is the Roset Sampler and it's an instrument that we can deploy in the water. It's equipped with a CTD probe that allows us the acquirement of uh, physical chemical data to characterize the whole water column in continuous. And then it also has a number of Niskin bottles here that allow us to get samples from specific depths. So we can uh, get samples from both epipelagic and mesopelagic layers of the ocean. Once the samples are collected, we process them and send them back to mines where they can be safely analyzed. The epipelagic or surface layer is the upper 200 meters of the ocean where the exchange processes with the atmosphere take place and photosynthesis occurs. The mesopelagic layer, or twilight zone, begins at the depth of 200 meters, where only 1% of incident light reaches, and ends at 1,000 meters, where there is no light. The water pumped through the keel should, of course, be uh, uncontaminated, because we want to uh, measure trace uh, elements and the keel is covered in a ceramic-based anti-fouling material, which is absolutely contamination-free. Since 50% of the ship's interior is used for scientific work, researchers can also analyze the samples on board or refrigerate them for further analysis at the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Mainz. Thus, a clean room, a wet room, and an atmospheric laboratory were installed in the rear of the ship. Okay, so this is the wet lab. This is where we analyze the samples that are actually coming in from the deck. Um, it's a small lab, but it's fully equipped with filtration setup and fridges, freezers. Um, also, what we do here is continuously monitoring the surface ocean. So um, we are pumping water from the keel, three and a half meter uh, water depth, distributed over many different sensors, temperature, turbidity, uh, particle size distribution, but also there are sampling chambers, a fast repetition rate fluorometer that measures photosynthetic activity of the phytoplankton. We have a flow cytometer that uh, measures the um, optical and scattering properties per cell, but also we have a staining module that can actually stain the bacteria and heterotrophic organisms. Additionally, we have connected a mass spectrometer, the mini Rudy, that's measuring the partial pressure of the gases dissolved in the um, surface waters. It's measuring uh, oxygen and nitrogen that are affected by biological processes and argon as a reference that's measuring the physical uh, behavior of the gases in the surface ocean. So here in our dry lab, we have the uh, mini Rudy mass spectrometer setup as well as another instrument for measuring CO2, which is the delta ray. The delta ray is an isotope ratio infrared spectrometer. We use this to determine the isotopic ratio of CO2, which gives us information about the source processes of CO2 in the seawater. A tube at the back of the ship brings air samples from 10 meters above the surface of the water to an air chemistry lab, where it is analyzed for particles, black carbon, chemical composition. We are in the atmospheric measurement lab. This is where the sampling tube that comes from outside and extends about 10 meters above the deck ends. We, as you can see, we have multiple sampling lines that are fed into different instruments in this lab. With a combination of instruments like the SMPS, uh, the APS and the CPC, we can extract information on the number concentration and the size distribution of the, of the sampled air. Whereas other instruments like the SP2 and the ethylometer are specialized in the study of soot and carbon containing particulate matter. We also have the possibility to collect samples that can be sent back to the Institute for further analysis. Opposite from the atmospheric measurement lab is a workstation with a computer unit. We have a comprehensive IT system on board Eugen Seibold. Uh, we have a large database server that is connected to all the instruments and collects all the data in a central place. And we have a very large storage capacity. And as well, we have a continuous satellite connection at the uplink to mines to send our data. The construction costs of the research yacht were fully covered by the Werner Siemens Foundation. Instrumentation and maintenance are provided by the Max Planck Society. The name was given in honor of Eugen Seibold, the German professor and marine geologist. Professor Eugen Seibold is the founder of the German marine geological community 
He was a great European, a great visionary, and he was clear, clearly the perfect namesake for our ship. According to Gerald Hauck, it is essentially thanks to Eugen Seibold that powerful and internationally recognized marine research has been set up in Germany. The crew of Eugen Seibold continues on with this tradition. Their expeditions on the Atlantic will help us better understand the interactions of the ocean and atmosphere and accurately reconstruct past climates. This knowledge is key to understanding ongoing and future climate change.